Hey guys. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, let's try that. I don't know why it struck me to do it, but I did. Uh, Rewatch Sinead O'Connor on Saturday Night Live singing Bob Marley's War. Well, a few things struck me when I rewatched it again. Just like reading an old book. You know, new things hit you. And, uh, this woman was at the height, the height of her success, and she's an Irish woman, and she destroyed the charts at the time uh, in America. America's the cash cow for European artists. Uh, I don't know so much now, but then, yeah, fuck yeah. Uh, but at the height of her fame and fortune, she took a stand. Now, at the time, I watched that. I watched that bit. I watched that video. I watched that show. Blew my fucking mind. Because... I mean, I'd, I'd been disillusioned with the church a minute ago. By then. But, you know, and the dogma, and it just, it, it wasn't for me. Uh, but... I hadn't seen holy men called evil before. Wow. Supposed holy men. Uh, because, I mean, this guy was... I think he's a saint, I don't know, but he was well-liked in the Catholic world. Uh, having grown up in it at the time, he was shit. He was awesome, you know? He, uh... <laughs> He was Polish and lived during the Nazi occupation, so he helped, you know, shelter Jews and whatnot. You know, he seemed like a pretty cool guy. Uh, seemed. Seemed. Like he gave a shit. Uh, you know, I mean, he was part of confronting the greatest evil of his generation. But he was a part of one of the greatest evils of our generation. And that's child abuse. And she took a stand against it. Damn the torpedoes. Uh, and she committed career suicide. She probably sold maybe another 500,000 albums in America, period. Uh, at the time, I had no idea of the shit that was going on. I had no idea. It didn't even occur to me. Like the kids nowadays, they have to worry about a guy with a fucking machine gun. I had to worry about the guy, the theoretical guy in the black van. They deserve better, don't you think? But back to the, back to the video. <clears throat> and she did. And she did. She committed career suicide. And, uh... She doesn't regret a damn bit of it. Because I listened to a, uh... NPR interview with her. And, uh... They asked her those questions, you know? And she said, nope, absolutely not. Because if it saved one kid from being abused... What the hell is... What the hell is my fortune... Compared to that? I admire that. Uh, her, the Dixie Chicks, uh, pretty much the whole Woodstock generation. Music, artistry in general, to me, is a sacred thing. It's a sacred duty. And not that they should be held in higher regard, you know, better humans uh, no or good humans nope but a certain credence should be given uh, when 
this person is uber rich, uber famous, and they have no way to go but up, and they said, what? I think we should check that out before we destroy that person's life in order to, I don't know, come to grips with what is now fucking fact. I don't know, I think we have a duty as artists to be the moral guide for the human race. Music, acting, art. Guernica? Hello. <laughs> uh. I just think we... We need to stop shying away from things. Uh that are considered controversial, that are considered uh, immoral, horrible, evil. Uh, expose it for what it is. What we do is allow others to rediscover their humanity. Photographers, artists, Bob Ross, Shit. And the song that she picked is a. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good damn choice. Until the philosophy which holds one race superior and another inferior. Until. The color of a man's skin is of no more significance than the color of his eyes. Mm. Until the basic human rights are equally guaranteed to all, without regard to race. Until that day, the dream of lasting peace, world citizenship, and the rule of international morality will remain but a fleeting illusion to be pursued but never attained. I won't be part of your war, but I will fight for that. <laughs>